it. Okay, can you introduce yourself and your dog? Uh, my name's Safra Andrew Main. Um, this is my dog, EDD Sprocket. Um, and this is his first time in Afghanistan as an EDD. Um, this is my third time over here. And uh, we're really looking forward to getting on to searching out inside the wire, which would be really good. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a bit about the dog and how you run him. Uh, with the dog, um, we're always up the front with the engineers. We're always up the of all the patrols that we do, as well as all the rope moves. Um, our dog is always out in front. Our dog's always out in front, um, in front of the searches. It gives off uh, the standoff and the security for the um, engineer search teams that we work with. And it gives them a peace of mind that they've got some early warning out there. Yeah. Uh, early warning for the searches for IEDs. Um, and saves people having to go down and risk themselves. Um, we don't put the dogs in unnecessary risk. Uh, if, if we can find an IED with our eyes before the dog gets down there, we don't risk the dog um, running down there and stepping on a device that we could have saved them from doing. Um, of course, we can't do this with all of our IEDs. Uh, with some of the IEDs that are out there, they can't actually be seen with the naked eye, so you do have to search. Um, that's one of the risks that's associated with our job. Um, the dogs are predominantly out there to find the no metal content um, IEDs that we are finding and the ones that the boys are struggling with. Uh, the dogs give the boys the peace of mind that if they can't find it with a metal detector, the dogs will definitely get it. So what's in store for you now in, in the short term? Uh, in the short term, uh, we'll keep continuing on with our training. Um, to, uh, we continue on with our training and then we step out uh, onto live tasks outside the wire uh, with the dogs and the boys. Um, and all the dog handlers are always keen to get out there and start searching with the boys as well mm -hmm. and provide that extra security to the search teams. Um, a lot of people love to work with us just for the capability that the dog can give. How attached do you get to, do, to your dog? Um, with the work bond that you do have to have with your dog, um, you don't want to be too attached to them. Um, of course when you're over here and you're actually living with them, you're going to get attached, uh, especially if you are out on patrol with the boys and you've got your sleep, you've got to tie them to you and they'll end up sleeping in the sleeping bag as well, especially when it's like minus 20, nice little hot water bottle. <laughs> but um, you do get attached to your dog. Um, this is my second dog that I've had over here. Uh, and I'm still very attached to my last dog that was here. Um, that I was here with, sorry. Mm -hmm. so. And the soldiers get attached to him too, don't they? The, uh, the soldiers and the boys do get attached to him. Um, being Australians, we all love our dogs. Um, it's one of those hard things where you've got to be able to separate that bone uh, for the job. Um, and it just has to bring in its own problems with that if you start letting the dog get pats and love from other people. Um, that can actually reduce their drive um, and they won't work as hard for you the next day. So it's in our, um, in what we do, we're not allowed to have the dogs as mascots. They're just strictly working dogs. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, you're very welcome.